Hello and welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have a returning guest with us, Trent Mel, CEO of First Cobalt, which can be traded as FCC on the TSX Venture. It also can be traded on the US OTC as FTSSF. Uh, very unique company, really the only uh, true ethical uh, US source, uh, North American source of cobalt. The cobalt is critical for the electric vehicle market. This is a company that we've been following since it started, uh, First Cobalt, and we believe that they're in a leadership position. They've been through a few cycles, and they're ready to really become a leader in this next uh, market that we're seeing, this excitement in the electric vehicle market. So Trent Mel, CEO of First Cobalt, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey, Jeb. Good to be on. Thanks for having me. Trent, we're, first off, let's talk about the electric vehicle sales. We've been such a volatile year, 2020. We've had this COVID crisis, the economy, you know, so much volatility. But we're seeing signs, in, in ch especially from China, that sales are increasing, even almost doubling year over year. That should be great news for juniors like us that are still pretty cheap, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I've always bemoaned the fact that North American investors don't see it, right? We're lagging the adoption wave of EVs around the world. But what we are seeing this year uh, is that this is no longer an Asia or a China specific story. And, and look no further than Europe. You got the release of VW's ID3. Uh, passenger sales with COVID passenger sales on the continent are down year over year, some like 25%. But unit sales of electric vehicles are double what they were the year prior. And then in terms of percentage penetration rates, we're up almost three times. And that's a quick, quick turnaround. And so I, I like to remind folks that when the largest consumer market in the world uh, awakes to electric vehicles, watch out. Things in America can really transform the in industry. And I think it's a lot closer than we think. And let's remind investors what First Cobalt has. You have... First, you have a huge resource in Idaho, and you also have a refinery in Ontario. Uh, what's the benefit of having both the resource and the refinery for cobalt? Yeah, no, you're right. All of our assets are in North America, so mineral properties in, in Canada and Idaho. Idaho by far being the flagship, and then the refinery in Canada. The, I think the advantage of having the two is mine development. It, it takes time, and, and unfortunately you got to follow the cycles and cobalt had a great cycle 17 18 we put the company together we merged with a number of companies and we put all of the pieces in place but mine development is uh, it takes time it takes money and patience uh, we had to put that on pause for a while but in, in the meantime we've got a very unique asset the only refinery on the continent that could produce battery grade cobalt sulfate for electric vehicles all of that's being done in china by and large today and, and that was a much easier asset to advance, uh, along with uh, support from, from Glencore, the world's largest cobalt miner. And so while us and others work at developing cobalt mines in, on the continent, which are still a few years away, uh, we have an opportunity to do exactly like China, which is to take feed from elsewhere, bring it in, produce the battery grade sulfate. It's a quick ramp up. It's a relatively low capex. And, and by being the only one, you've got this cachet of being, uh, of, of being exclusive. And, and tra frankly, a lot of the OEMs, and consumers that I'm talking about are quite keen to see an ex-China supply that they can get their hands on. Yeah, I, I recently uh, saw a report that Derek McPherson, the mining analyst from Red Cloud, uh, said that you guys are quickly becoming a go-to investment in the EV space, and he upped the target to 45 cents, which is more than three times uh, from these levels. Uh, you just recently planned uh, the, uh, put out news with the deal with Glencore and um, discussing a long-term feed purchase contract rather than the the tolling arrangement at the the cobalt refinery. So everyone knows Glencore is one of the largest commodity companies in the world. Talk to us about your uh, the recent news and your relationship with Glencore going forward. Yeah, the, the relationship has evolved uh, in a positive way, both both in, in, in the sense of the support they're providing, but also with the new 
upside I think we've unlocked for our shareholders. And so at inception, Glencore advanced to us a little over a year ago, $5 million uh, US dollars to uh, advance our refinery plan. So complete a feasibility study, do some met work. And the results of that came out in May, uh, widely reported, very positive. Uh, looks like we'll be competitive with some of the best in China. And so, uh, so a great asset. And we've been optimizing ever since then. Now, when we did the loan agreement, the understanding was that Glencore would provide you know, 50 to 100% of the capital requirements, uh, which are estimated at about 60 million. Uh, and and the, in exchange for that, they would we would toll for them. So they would provide the fee, but then they would also take the final product and market it. So fast forward a year later, where are we? Well, we've got a lot of other counterparties that have stepped forward and have offered to provide us with the funds, some banks and private equity groups, uh, subject to finalizing our commercial arrangements. So with that, uh, we've, we've managed to, I guess, parlay that into a different kind of relationship with Glencore, still providing the feed, uh, but we will be buying it from them rather than toll treating. So what it means is that we're no longer getting paid a percentage per pound cobalt produced. We actually sell it at market prices and we lock in a lot greater margin. That uh, feasibility study was predicting annual cash flow at the assumed prices uh, of, of about $40 million per year. And so under a toll arrangement, maybe that gets cut in half. But under a market-based arrangement, you get full exposure to whatever the prevailing commodity price is. So a huge, huge development. Uh, and I think Derek's uh, research report in the upgrade kind of reflects that. And, and you've seen this, Jeb, many times in your career, right? The junior, you're, you're kind of, you're chugging along, putting all the pieces in place, going largely unnoticed. And then all of a sudden, uh, you got the pop. And, and I think that's what people are looking for us to do is, we've got, you know, permits are at hand. We're working. We're getting close on some government support. We're close on financing the commercial contracts, not just Glencore. We're likely going to buy other third-party feed. And so we truly are going to be an independent player in the market with the support of one of the biggest players. And, and this can come together, I would think, in the next three or four months, a lot of the big pieces are put into place. And then uh, then we're off to the race to start construction uh, next uh, spring, probably by June of next year. And then 12 months later, we're actually producing. So it's near not far off production. And you're looking at some other sectors here's in the battery metals we saw lithium many of the juniors have popped recently nickel yeah. a bunch of the nickel stocks have popped maybe it's time the gold the uh, cobalt stocks will start getting traction again yeah and when you look at you know nickel had a good run on, on the ev thematic and yet when you look at you know world supply of nickel it's only 4% or 5% that are actually going into the electric vehicle market right there's so many other stainless applications and whatnot that account for uh, for demand. Lithium and cobalt, if you really want exposure to Tesla or the, the new iconic Mach 3 that Ford's gonna release in the coming days, if you wanna gain exposure in, in this end of the universe, it's lithium and it's cobalt. Lithium is easier to play uh, because there are a lot of smaller players, but cobalt tends to be locked up with the giant China Mali, Glencore Valley and others. And so we're a little bit unique, which means maybe we've gotta make a little more noise so people actually think that there is an opportunity to invest in cobalt. But for those investors that are looking for it, uh, yeah, it is a great torque. And, and because of the, the nature of our investment, our refinery is already permitted for a smaller throughput. It's largely built. There's no infrastructure and no mine to build. The ramp up in terms of the risk of either whether it be a CapEx creep or technical difficulties is significantly smaller than a mine development. And so I think we provide some really good expo unique exposure and, and one that's, again, centered in North America and not China. So, so many good attributes. Um, investors, uh, some have been with me for a couple of years now are waiting for these catalysts to come uh, to, to become unlocked. And we are we are oh so close. And I hope people will pay attention. And, and, and we're doing this on the heels of in North America. I, I bought a Tesla last year. And why? Because, you know, on this side of the world, that's about all you got. But uh, you know, VW came up with their ID3 in Europe. We're going to have what's called the ID4 here on the continent uh, in America next year. As I said, the Mustang is coming a year later. We're going to have the F-150. The Hummer is going to go electric. It's all coming and it's going to come really, really fast. And I think our timeline to cash flow is really well timed with the evolution of the North American market. Yeah, my son who just had a bar, his bar mitzvah, he's been talking to me about the cyber truck. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about getting a couple of those for the refinery. <laughs> Driving around, it'd be it'd be kind of neat, kind of neat to have. In fact, one of the things we're looking at at our refinery, you know, what's what's different for me as a miner, kind of 20 years in here, having worked in palladium and gold and nickel. Uh, is when you're when you're making a product like ours and, and that it's going into a consumer product, whether it be a phone, a laptop or a car, um, it's not just about you know health, environment, safety, community relations. It really is about carbon footprint because the carbon footprint of your Tesla measures right back to the mine head. 
And so one thing we were able to demonstrate in the last couple of weeks is we're going to have one of the green, greenest, if not the greenest, refinery on the planet, in part because we're on a hydro grid up in Canada. But that's prompted us to think, well, how do we get even better? So instead of having diesel equipment, maybe we do get battery powered equipment, which is kind of obvious given the industry we're in. But we put that out into the market and the ESG funds love it. Uh, more importantly, the OEMs love it. And it's, it's, a, it's a unique attribute as well that we're going to have to leverage as we uh, seek to secure the optate contracts in the coming months. So not only do you get this huge resource of cobalt in Idaho and uh, North America's only cobalt refinery with Glencore, uh, working with Glencore, but when I was in September, I was looking at the silver uh, and, and there's so much exposure to here that's not even mentioned to the market. No one knows about this. And, but I saw some of the past production from the Kerr area uh yeah. by the refinery there's nine past producers and there was historic production of close to six seventy six million ounces i believe of silver and it was shallow mining they never really explored it with modern methods at depth um it's, it's really there needs to be more money put into this because um, if you're looking at silver you know the grades here are really some of the highest i've seen in the world yeah, no, that's a good point. So we get the refinery up and running. What's next? So yes, we have this this large and growing resource in Idaho. So you get, I mean, that's that's coming for free right now. Our cobalt resource in Idaho is a beautiful asset. We'll we'll get back to drilling it next summer. And then you got silver, and we're in the middle of a good a good silver rush right now. And, and once again, we're not getting any credit for it. But you're right. And Kerr is just one piece of the puzzle. Seventy five million ounces of production, nine mines, um, and that's just a small piece less than a thousand uh, hectares. We've got a hundred square kilometers of land over 50 uh, past producing mines. And so we're gonna start some geophysics on the camp. You know, this is where we started the company because this silver district had a lot of cobalt in it. And so these are high grade bonanza grade uh, veins uh, with silver and with cobalt as a byproduct. And we went looking for, for more cobalt, but with cobalt price having come down over that time and silver having doubled, a lot of the silver players are knocking on our door. We've, we've started a process and we've been fairly transparent about that. Uh, and we're not, you know, it's not going to be a fire sale because our holding cost of these assets is next to nil. But if we can raise a little bit of money off these silver assets to put towards our refinery and not dilute our shareholders, great. Um, and if not, we're going to hang on to it. We've got a little bit of flow through. We'll drill it, out, drill it ourselves and we'll demonstrate just how high the grades are. We have grades of up to 1,400 grams per ton silver over two, three meters. And so, um, yeah, it just, it takes work. It's a big, big line package. So it does take some work. If we can partner and create value, great. And I, I'm relatively hopeful there's, there's something to be done there. So I guess stay tuned is what I would say. So there's exposure here to battery metals. We've seen the recent run that we've, uh, in, in uh, other battery metals, cobalt has not yet made that run, but we're seeing signs that there could be uh, an uptick there. And we have, this uh, upside with silver, which is has had a breakout year in 2020. So it's a great uh, company. You've been had, building a base here, you know, at this 15 cent range for, I think, since the beginning of, of 2019. And, yeah. and many of my subscribers know the old saying, the bigger the base, the bigger, you know, the takeoff. So, um, how do investors get more information? I know they can go to the website at firstcobalt.com uh, and also you're active on Twitter as well. You, you have your uh, profile at, at Trent Mell, uh, M-E-L-L. Uh, any other contact info or how I'm they- Sure, I mean, I mean, we try to respond to everybody, uh, whether it be uh, yeah, message in, in Twitter or through our website at in, info at firstcobalt.com. Um, and, and I, I, you know, we, we do our best between myself, Sabrina and Regan, we, we try to make sure we respond to everybody. I look, I'm really excited. I, I and for, the, for those who have been shareholders for a while, yes, we've been building a base where it feels like forever, but we've got three big catalysts. One is absolutely in our control and that's executing over the next few months over the catalysts that, that I've already laid out. The second one, as you pointed out, Jeb, is the recovery of the cobalt price. It started, it, it got knocked back with COVID and is now coming back is the is the silver bonus that, that you referred to so look it's an exciting time for us um i have never worked harder this is a real uh, it's been a stressful period for me and the team but stressful in a good way and um we're uh, i won't say we, we're getting our strut back because we're a pretty we're a pretty humble group 
but we're getting a lot more confident and, and we're getting a lot more optimistic about the future. When you build a company like this, you know, you, there's a lot of bumps along the way and, and turns and you, you take your, you take your bruising along the way. And there are times when it looks like, like you just don't know when you're going to come out of it. And, and I feel I can see the sun on the horizon here coming up. And uh, I'm really, really excited for what we have going for us and, and, and what we're going to accomplish here in the next several months. Trent Mel, CEO of First Cobalt. You can tr- get it. You can trade it on the TSX Venture as FCC. And it also can be traded on the USOTC as FTSF. F-T-S-S-F. You can go to the website at firstcobalt.com. Thanks, Trent, for being here with us today and for giving us this update. Yeah, likewise. Thanks for having me, Jeb. You take care.